sense. He's pulling off some, like, um, <laughs> some Chowren slash Jangby Storms, or some uh, Best God Jangby Storms, you know, an Oxymoron. Uh, that, wow, I'm not going to go down that path, because I don't even know what I'm saying. However, he is uh, living up to, um, you know, some, some, some... I, I don't even know. Uh, some I was going to say the being a good college from Canada uh, skills. Yeah, there there's where I'm going with that. Uh, McGill being one of the best universities in Canada, I believe. So nice work there from um, Oxymoron. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I've heard McGill is like the Harvard of Canada. Anyway, um, I just completely made up that statement because uh, not the Harvard of Canada, but I, I just didn't have anything further to say. So I just, you know, struggling for words there, trying to make fun of his name. And you know, this is the, this is one of the hazards of being a commentator. Uh, sometimes you just you just lose your tongue. You have no idea what you're going to say next, um, and you you know it, it, it's a hazard because you're trying to be amusing. And anyway, storm drop, psionic, psionic. There, that helps. Um, Nexus! Oh, ne, Nexus! Ne. I just gotta say, ne, after everything, and uh, th that, will, that will entertain you guys to no end. Uh, anyway, this game has gone on quite long with neither of them being able to break this narrow choke point here. I mean, both of them could have had better tactics throughout this game. Uh, you know, the Protoss could have gone around the Terran, certainly, and, and gone for a. Uh, a Dual, you know, both sides attacking um, or something like that, and the Terran obviously could have pushed in several times this game. Uh, looks like the Proaz is going to move out though. However, he might lose every probe at the bottom here um, due to this one vulture. We're going to have to see. However, is the Terran going to be able to do anything at this point to fight off this small force here? He could actually just get a couple of vultures. He does have vultures, so these tanks are going to be saved by the vultures if um, Feisheng can just move them over there. He just needs to A move over there. It looks like he will. So he is going to take down uh, this small attacking force. Meanwhile, it looks like, um, most likely, the Vulture was killed off by a probe. Um, and, oh, wow, look at Orange here. Feishank going in the warpath, finally. Um, and he's going to pick off uh, more, more Zealots from Oxymoron. You know what I find often is very scary or very interesting? When a player is just about to lose or suddenly realizes he's losing, they usually get so much more aggressive. And sometimes they can actually win the game at that moment, um, you know, because they don't even realize, uh, you know, how much they have in the way of forces. And then they're like, oh, man, I'm losing. i got to go all in. And then... And, you know, they have this one big all-in push. And sometimes he win. Um, but anyway, Feishang looks like he might just be getting a little more aggressive. He needs to pick off his High Templar, but he couldn't there. And, uh, of course, he needed to uh, pick up a third base way sooner than now. And this shuttle, oh man, this shuttle has probably taken down more SCVs than we've even seen so far in this game. Uh, and it's going to go in once again to pick off more. This High Templar, 5 kills, 13 kills, oh my god, it went from 5 to 19 there. Oh god, hero Changbi-esque storming there. And, uh, you know, that has been the single most impressive thing I've seen from Oxymore on this whole game, um, you know, is his uh, storm drops. Uh, and the, one of the least impressive things I've seen from Feishang is his inability to take care of this one shuttle. I don't even know, I don't even know if he notices that going in or out, but, you know, one unit shooting up like a Goliath uh, could have taken care of all of this much sooner. And also, oh man, along with not expanding, not upgrading has been the bane of his existence. I mean, right now the Protoss is way ahead with plus two attack, plus one armor, and you know, that is just horrible. The Protoss player actually choosing to take out Durgan at this point. It looks like he's just um, unhappy about him uh, scouting around with this probe. I think what happened perhaps was this probe uh, attacked the pylon or something, and he realized, hey, maybe he was still alive. I wonder how, wouldn't it be just amazing if <laughs> if Durgan wasn't actually dead and there were suddenly like 12 carriers coming from here and he actually had like two bases up here and then all of a sudden Oxymoron sees them like streaming down like 12 carriers and he's like, oh man, and you know, he, Durgan was just pretending to be dead. That would have been hilarious, but unfortunately that's not going to happen for him. He actually is dead, so uh, he's going to go down right now. And, you know, uh, a comedy of errors, basically, here, but a comedy nonetheless, you know, entertaining StarCraft. Um, and it looks like Durgan has been eliminated also. Uh, I don't see any teal buildings around, so he is gone from the game. 
it is truly a one-on-one -on -one situation now, and uh, Fei Shang looks like he's just had some uh, Red Bull. Um, maybe uh, since he goes to John Hopkins, he's you know some some guy from the medical school there is giving him a shot of adrenaline or something because uh, he's suddenly moving a lot faster. Uh, maybe it, you know realizing, uh, hey, I need to get back in this game, and he's actually producing uh, kind of a, a semi-contained here. He could actually expand once again if he wants. Um, he definitely uh, right now is in a decent defensive position, although certainly his food count is pretty low. Uh, the Protoss actually way higher on the army count. Looks like he's actually built a considerable force here, finally. He's also got another army here, and, uh, you know, oh man, though, it looks like he's not mining anymore. He doesn't have enough for another Nexus! Oh no! Looks like the Protoss player in this comedy errors has forgotten to save himself 400 minerals for a Nexus! So this could be horrible for him. He's going to need a distance mine right now uh, to get enough minerals, and he's uh, scouting right now with some speed lots and a high, high Templar going uh, for some reason over there. So what's he going to do? He is going to have to distance mine here. I don't see... Um, you know, oh, he should be canceling the zealot. Oh, cancel the zealot. Oh no, he lets the zealot finish. He doesn't have any upgrades or anything to cancel, so that he can just save himself minerals, so he can build himself a damn nexus. He's not gonna have a nexus, and oh, Fei Shang is gonna go for a big harassment here. He's gonna kill a lot of these probes completely undefended. However, at the same time, Oxymoron going for harassment of Fei Shang's only mining base. So. He's actually also going in the front. He has a large army at home. Also, he's not using. He should be using this army. Use the army, Fei Shang. I mean, Oxymoron, whatever. Use use, use the Red Bull. Use your APM. Uh, you know, one movement per second is just not enough. One and a half movements. You really, uh, to play a level of StarCraft um, that is above this, you really need about 160 or so. For, for Protoss, I'd say you need about 140 to get to, like, uh, a reasonably competitive level among even foreign amateur players. Um... And, you know, not not that APM is everything, of course, but uh, certainly it helps in situations like this when you have multiple fronts you need to uh, defend and attack on, and you need to be doing multiple things. Uh, Terran player looks like he's still on the Red Bull, though, still on the Epinephrine. He's going for, uh, he needs to defend, though. I mean, right now he is almost completely dead. He's lost every SCV, and his command center is burning. Doesn't even have any SCVs left. He's got one SCV left, but he actually has expanded over here on the right side, but he's finally lost all of his SCVs. I don't know how he's even had this many to begin with, but um, you know, he doesn't have any minerals left saved up, he's got like three SCVs hiding around his base, however, if he can pick off all the probes and somehow kill the army, he still has a, a command center in position of mine, and uh, looks like yellow oxymoron is losing probes by the dozen here, he still has um, maybe just six or seven probes, actually no, he's got a lot more probes uh, rallied around this uh, <laughs> there's a simulator here. Still not enough to build a, a Nexus, though. This game could have been in his hands much sooner had he, in, had he just saved up enough to build a Nexus in the corner instead of, um, oh man, going in and losing more probes. However, this game might be over because he doesn't have anything left to defend his base. Um, Fei Shang, with no minerals coming in, uh, you know, just simply has lost the ability to produce an army, and he is going to lose this game. Um, he is down to 20 food count. They're probably all vultures, and yeah, the vultures, uh, you know, are just going to die to these dragoons. He really could have done a better job defending of one of these focal points in the middle. And now, finally, the game is over. Um, Fei Shang mining with just two SCVs here, and uh, you know we're probably going to see Oxymoron scour the map for the remaining bases um, just to make sure that he's won this game. And once the factories go down, of course, it is going to be over. Uh, that dropship was completely useless the entire game. Why was there not a drop over here? Uh, I really uh, wonder. But um, it's possible that Fei Shang did not know the map either, because Oxymoron certainly didn't. He didn't know where the spawns were in the beginning. However, despite having uh, the, the his ally one day is a lion dying right in the beginning um, when I felt that he could have actually survived had he uh, just been defended quicker had uh, either oxymoron gone for some DTs, or had uh, one day as a line gone for you know one more sunken colony, or one more, um, or or didn't lose all of his links in the middle. Uh, I think he could have definitely held off that two on one. In which case, um, the JHU team, the John Hopkins team, was in huge trouble. But in any case, in the end, the John Hopkins team will lose. Fei Shang just completely out of the game. Oh man, he's still trying though. These vultures have gotten a lot of kills <laughs> on these remaining probes, who still have not accumulated. 400 minerals yet. I mean, I guess he decided to build something in between two. Um, 
And uh, it looks like it doesn't matter, though. The, there's just one vulture left. And uh, this is going to be it for John Hopkins. Fei Shang defeated at the hands of Oxymoron, who made a nice comeback, i got to say. When his ally had GG'd already, I hope it was just on ally chat, though, because that's really BM if you say it... Um, if you say it, uh, you know, in, in normal chat, and your team continues to play. In fact, in most leagues, that would uh, count as your team just GGing and quitting, even if they try to play longer. However, maybe it was on allied chat. So, uh, you know, uh, in any case, um, McGill, the uh, KTF of Canada, or the um, CJ Entis of Canada. In fact, I think maybe the only school from Canada, uh, the Lake Half Oz of Canada. Anyway, winning this game um, solidly here, and uh, Oxymoron uh, at the end finally taking a victory. So, hope you guys enjoyed this 2v2 commentary. I know it's an amateur game, but uh, certainly an interesting game nonetheless. Um, thank you guys for watching. This is Cholera uh, casting once again for Voice of Esports, and this was the Collegiate Star League. For those of you who are interested, go to the link in the uh, video description where um, there will be the link for uh, the main site, and you can email some of the administrators there and get your college involved. Thanks for watching.